Welcome to Garden Crossings. I'm Heidi. Today we are going to do kind of a greenhouse tour of what is going on and what's been going on over the past week or so. Uh, we're going to do some follow-ups as far as videos that we had shown of us planting up these beautiful container combinations. It's been I think maybe two weeks or so since we've done that and they've come a long way so I wanted to just kind of show you what they're currently looking like. We're setting up the garden center because we open this Friday, April 7th. So we'll show you some of the fun things that we got here in the store. And then we're gonna head on back to our shipping department and just show you the team hard at work getting the plants shipped out so that they'll be arriving on maybe your doorstep yet this week. So let's go ahead and take a walk through the garden center to start with and just see what's going on. So we're gonna start off with showing you the container combinations and just the progress that they've made. And I'm gonna look for the names of them. This one here is called Firefly and it's got the Kimberly Queen Fern in the center along with the Surefire Rose Begonias and then it's got the um, this vine in it as well and it's just it's really filling out nicely so I'm really impressed with how much color this has just with that begonia in there in the center. Uh, next we have the combination called Sunny Days Ahead and this one is really doing fabulous. It's got that rockin' purple salvia in the center so that's going to be the thriller. It's got the Scavola Whirlwind Purple and then the Persimmon Supertunias. Look at that beautiful color of Persimmon. You just, that is just such a great new plant here for 2023. The Angel Wings are on Angel Wings combination. And this one's taking a little longer to fill out, but that's okay. Uh, it's got the Wicked Witch Coleus there in the back. It's got the Senecio Angel Wings, the Chocolate Drop Coleus, and then the Dicondra Silver Falls. So that's going to be really a very cool foliage combination, I think. We'll head over here where there's a bunch more color. You really can't go wrong with uh, the impatience here, the Rockapocos. These are Rockapoco Pink. I'm trying to find the name of what we call this one. Uh, this one's called Pure Bliss. So some of you who uh, maybe have bought in our eight inch or quart combinations, this one has also been found in a smaller size that we can ship online. It's got the Lasmachia Creeping Jenny, the Diamond Frost, and then the beautiful Rockapoco Rose Impatience. Great pop of color for a shady area. Next, we have this one, which is called Hipster. It's kind of a fun name. You can see the Queen Tut starting to kind of spring out from the top. That will be the Thriller. And they're just really all mingling nicely with the Super Bell's yellow, the Super Bell, uh, Super Tunia really red. And then I think this is the new Super Bina. Yeah, Super Bina Imperial Blue is that beautiful purple. So that's going to be pretty once it fills out a little bit more. This one is called the Spellbound Combination. It's got the nice dark coleus there in the center. The Lasmachia Creeping Jenny hanging over the edge. And then this is going to be an orange sun patient once, it's, once it starts to open. So it just kind of gives you a visual of all the colored foliage, textures going on. And then that bright, bright splash of orange is going to be gorgeous. Another new mix, and this has got pretty much, yeah, this is all new plants for 2023. We are calling this combination, spin you around, Midnight, Midnight Madness. It's got the beautiful Nemesia. This is the Mulberry Nemesia, very fragrant. It's got the Persimmon Supertunias, and then the Queen Tut grass in the center. So really a great color combination, kind of that wispiness going on with the Nemesia, beautiful petunias, and then the, that cypress grass is amazing as well. Here we have the tickled pink combination. It's got the Blackberry Punch Superbells, Diamond Frost Euphorbia, and then this is going to have the Salvia uh, Rock and Fuchsia. So a nice thriller. Oh, and actually look at there, there's a little potato vine sweeped in the back there too just to give that dark black interest as well. I guess it's in the front too. All right. Shade Appeal. Shade Appeal's got the Hypoestes, the polka dot plant. This is the polka dot rose. Yep, polka dot rose with a Kimberly fern in the center. And then this is a, 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 a Infinity Impatient. And this one we chose was cherry red. So it's gonna have beautiful kind of pinkish red blooms. That's gonna look so nice, especially with that polka dot plant. 
neon pink sparkles. We use the Kimberly Fern again, along with the Diamond Frost Euphorbia. And this is the Sun Patience Compact Hot Pink. So this one can handle a little bit more sun because it's got that Sun Patient in it, uh, where the one we just looked at has the Infinity, which is more of the shade type impatient. But look at that gorgeous splash of color there. I love that mix. Next, and this will be the last one we look at today, this is On the Rocks. It's got the Sparkling Amethyst Superbina, the Great Punch Superbells, a little bit of Lobelia here, and then this is going to have the Fuchsia Salvia. It's going to be a great plant. So we're going to continue to kind of walk around the garden center and just show you some of the beautiful things that are blooming. Check out these Corabels. This is the Peachberry Ice. What a great color for your shade or sun gardens. This is an evergreen perennial in most areas, so it'll give you color year round. And oh wow, Heuchera Spearmint, check out the flowers on this. It's got beautiful bright magenta pink blooms. This plant blooms nearly all summer long. A great plant for the hummingbirds and the leaves are really pretty. They're just kind of a lighter pink with a silvery kind of sheen on them. But yeah, this is one of those, those Heuchera or Corbels that blooms nearly all summer. This beautiful one here is the Wild Rose. That's a great color, don't you think? white perfusion salvia so everything blooming right now these are all early spring blooming perennials so if you're kind of wondering you know what can you put in your garden to give yourselves that early spring color if they're blooming right now it's going to be one of the first things that probably blooms in your garden as well pig squeak our virginia this is miss piggy and this plant we've been so impressed with i mean the leaves are just huge on this the name is given because if you rub the leaves they're squeaky and the flowers, huge, bright magenta pink flowers, gorgeous shade plant. And then when it's not blooming, you have this nice dense foliage. I mean, look at that. That is, that, that plant has got some texture and some thickness to it. Here we have the wild rose heuchera. And I'm going to show you these side by side because I often get asked, what's the difference between wild rose and wild berry? So there you have it side by side. Wild rose has just a little bit more pink hues to it, where wild berry is a little bit more purple, uh, some more of that black veining going on. So very similar, but definitely different looking as well. And here's a fun one. This is the Jacob's Ladder. It's called Heaven Scent. Great olive kind of foliage, beautiful periwinkle blooms. Oh. I don't even know how to describe the scent to you, but it's sweet, almost smells like grapes. Think about like if you've ever had those scratch and sniff stickers that smell like grape, that's the smell I'm smelling here. Oh, it is heavenly. This is the heaven scent polymonium. All right, let's see what else we've got. Got a little bit of a bloom there on Daisy May. She's really trying hard to tell us that she's an early bloomer. She's not. More great foliage here. This is the Fun and Games Hopscotch, beautiful coppery orange shades. This would be great planted with those corabels. Nice splash of color even before your flowers are blooming. This foliage is really nice. Perfect Perfusion. This is a salvia, kind of a very light pink. It's art light pink purple light lavender purple color nice upright plant for the garden a lot of heuchera though look at those man this color is this is dressed up ball gown bright splash of color really kicks the gardening season off here we have pink uh, pink pink a blue so i've gotten caught before people said you're calling it pink and blue heidi that's that's not the name you're right pink a blue and this here is a pulmonaria, beautiful speckly foliage with those pink and those blue flowers. Absolutely a gorgeous plant for shade gardens that really gives a nice pop of color early in the season. So that's kind of what we've got in the garden center to show you that has some color on it. 
So we're going to take a look at some of the garden accents that we brought in for this season. Uh, and also we've gone out and bought in some really kind of fun plants as well. Uh, these aren't things that we grow here at Garden Crossings, but Dawn, our garden center manager and I, we went out on a little field trip last week and went and visited a greenhouse that has all these cool kind of topiary uh, type plants. So we've got these little standards here. There's rosemary and lavender. Just kind of a cute little cute little thing. Everything they grow is in terracotta pots and it's the dirtiest, slimiest greenhouse floor you, I've ever been to in my life. Uh, but I don't know if they've got to keep it so humid in there or what, just to kind of get the, the slime going on the pots. Like that's, that's the character there. Um, but it is kind of cool looking as well. These little topiaries here with the angel vine, really cute. We also have a pretty cool collection of kissy faces. Oh boy, I just made a fool out of myself, didn't I? But wouldn't these make a cute planter? Couldn't you imagine planting a little bit of this angel vine in there or some wispy grass all fun and funky looking? Really cute little planters. Bigger, little smaller ones. This one I think is kind of adorable as well. Uh, so yeah, those are really fun and they always seem to be a big hit for people when they come in just because I think they're different and everyone's looking for something just a little different and a little, little whimsy and fun. We also will have a nice selection of house plants. Um, actually, I call them house plants. They're more like miniature plants. So if you're into doing fairy gardens or that kind of thing, these are just small dainty plants that work really well in fairy gardens. We have a huge collection of chick charms and pretty much everything, everything I'm talking about ish, like not these little things, but chick charms, these can all be mailed too. So if you're somebody that's not local, these can all be mailed to your door. So fun things. Uh, we have the new chick charm giants. These are huge chen and, <laughs> hen and chicks. And when I saw them first last year, I just, I couldn't believe the size of them. I mean, compare compare the two in size and I mean these giants really are giant hen and chicks and they come in some pretty cool colors as well so those can be checked out on our website online if you want to learn more about the giant hen and chicks. The girls are unloading right now our shipment of aqua pots so let's go take a look and see what we've got. So it looks like we got in three different designs of the aqua pots this year. Um, we've got this nice blue shade here. We've got kind of more of that aqua green with the volcanic drip going on. Uh, we've got some, perp, uh, some of the cobalt blue rippled edges. Uh, looks like we, oh, we got the nice vine pattern as well. This is the antique white with the vine. So nice and smooth. So what are aquapots, you might be asking? Well, aquapots are essentially self-watering planters, not totally self-watering though. Uh, basically what you can do is you plant your plants in it, you fill up the water reservoir in the bottom, and usually about once a week or so, you have to refill with more water. Now, I'm gonna say once a week and say that cautiously. So early in the season, once a week might work fine, but as we get on in the season, and also depending on what plants you put in these pots, you may need to check them and rewater them about twice a week. But twice a week is much better in my opinion than needing to come out and water my plants every single night. So uh, basically there's a fill tube here. You fill the water in through this tube as the water reservoir fills up. And if it starts to get too full, there's a hole on the side where any excess water will drain out. So that way you don't create a soupy mess. Any excess is gonna drain out and you know that your reservoir is full. Um, the reservoir also is great because it holds fertilizer. So we usually recommend once a week when you fill this up with water to go ahead and also put your water soluble fertilizer in here. So that way your plants are constantly getting fed. So really a great solution to not needing to water every single day. And uh, nice sizes, like I feel like these are manageable sizes. They're, they're big, but they're not huge. So I think the average gardener could use this size in their garden without having to figure out how are we gonna move these giant aqua pots 
like you may have seen in my videos that we use out here in the um, garden landscape. So great new product, a lot of metal statuary, cement work, wind chimes, all kinds of fun things that we'll have here um, at Garden Crossings. And if you are in the area this weekend, uh, April 7th and 8th, we're doing our planting parties where you can plant up hanging baskets and containers, and then we'll hold on to them and grow them for you until Mother's Day. So we provide the pots, the plants, the soil, and the love, and you can come get them, yeah, around Mother's Day. So let's go take a look at what the shipping guys are doing out in the shipping area. We're heading out through the tunnel of boxes. These pallets are all waiting to get shipped out on the FedEx truck today. So we have to keep a little aisle way to go from our front of the garden center into our shipping area. But man, they've got probably 12, 15, maybe even 20 box, our pallets of, of boxes just waiting to go on the truck today. So I know yesterday they put out a full truck and today it's looking like it's gonna be another full truck. So let's see what we've got going on back here in the shipping area. So they're just about finished for the week once this is all out. Um, our put away teams, they're both finished doing what they need to do for the day. Uh, so these carts are all set up for uh, next week when we'll start shipping some more. Uh, over here, these are all carts that are divided out and put, put together. So basically what we have here is we have numbered trays and in these numbered trays are plants. Each number tray actually represents a customer, even though I don't know who the customer is. So customer, uh, our tray 187 has a bunch of denim and lace, and the denim and lace is also in tray 188. So this tells me that this customer ordered 10 plants. So they've been assigned to two trays. Next tray 189, this is probably a totally new customer. They've got incredible hydrangeas and they got a bunch of hydrangeas. Next tray 190's got a couple annuals. So this now I'm guessing is probably a new customer. So we don't know who, who these belong to at this point, uh, but we do know that they've all been divided out by the customer. As we head over here, we have our shipping computers and what the gals are doing is they're scanning that number on the tray that populates the customer's order. It now tells us who the customer is it also will print off the shipping label and she's scanning every pot to that order to verify that all the plants are correct in that order. Once that's been done, we'll head down here, we'll have to kind of weasel our way through. Like literally weasel our way through. They have screens telling them how many plants are on an order. So they're looking at their screens. They know that this order is gonna have 29 plants. So they'll make sure that the 29 plants come in their way. They'll get put into a paper sleeve, put into a box where the label will get applied to them. Once the label is applied, they get sent down the track behind me here where they then get taped up. and put onto a pallet so that they're ready for FedEx. Another important job on the shipping line is the person who's supplying all the boxes to the gales that are putting the plants in the box. So he's got a TV screen there and it's telling him all the orders in the order that they come and it's also telling him what size box he needs. Um, I think we have six different configurations of box sizes. Uh, so that's telling him if he needs a four, a six, a nine, a 12, a 16, or a 20 and then he's passing them down to the girls. And uh, hopefully the box size matches the amount of plants that come. If not, then they just say, hey, we need a, you know, whatever size box and he'll quickly make one for them. But usually it's a pretty seamless process that all flows really well and uh, goes, goes really nice. So although shipping is just about finished for the week, it doesn't mean the week is done. We're on to the next thing. And it looks like we had a four star truck come today and drop us off a bunch more anni annuals. So the planting process continues. We don't just do one time planting and call it good for the year. We're planting up to five, six different rounds of the same plants. So another big week. I think we have uh, flower pillows probably to plant here in the next week as well. 
So right now they're just taking inventory, making sure we got everything that we need. And the team, I believe, is out in the back greenhouse is getting prepared and ready to get these things planted. So all in a day's work, all in a week's work here at Garden Crossings. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. And if you're new to the station, be sure to subscribe. I'm Heidi from Garden Crossings.